I'm going to do a little recap. Uh, I'm not going to tell our usual story about our gentleman who goes into the church and gets saved. I'm just going to ask you guys some questions. And I was going to bring some little like prizes, candy things, but I was so late this morning. My goodness, everybody was in the bathroom. I couldn't get in. Uh, but that's the struggles of living with uh, a lot of people. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys some questions, and I just want to see if we remember. Uh, and even if you haven't been here the whole time, you can answer. Uh, so the topic is salvation, and I'm going to ask you questions regarding it. So uh, let's start with Josh in the back. Josh, what is salvation? Salvation? What is it? If you were going to define it. Is the act of the act of rescue. Okay. Relate it to the Bible. Related to the Bible? How does it how does it make sense in well, the Bible? Jesus was set for one purpose is to save humanity, to rescue us from our damnation, which is which is hell. And that's only that it that is the cause of our sin, which can only be paid off by the blood of Jesus. Mm. Very thorough. Okay, anybody disagree? Have a better explanation? No? We're all good? You're good with that? Yeah. Alright, cool. Alright, so saving us from damnation. <laughs> well, that's true. You're going to hell without him. Uh, that's true, yes. I don't know if this is like the same thing, but I guess I would say it's like renewal through Jesus. Salvation. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a lot, that, certainly. Yeah. Renewal, regeneration, you come alive, everything. My goodness. Yeah, a ton of stuff. Um, okay, let me ask you another question. Uh, <clears throat> let me ask this one to uh, Steve. <coughs> All right, Steve, who can be saved? Who? The, uh, sinners. Sinners? Only sinners? Well, everyone can be saved. Everyone? All right. We believe in the name of Jesus. Um, how about uh, uh, somebody like Hitler? Is uh, somebody that terrible? Can he be saved? Yeah. All right, David says yes. Um, hmm, who else? Like, uh, <laughs> how about a pastor of the Church of Satan? Is there a possibility for him? Yes. So, huh? Because all sin are evil. Okay. So, who can be saved? And we believe everybody has the potential. That's a loaded word, of course. We'll learn about it. Uh, uh, can believing in the gospel really save somebody? Believing in the gospel, can that really save someone? Uh, let me just, just to clarify the question. The salvation is saving you from God's wrath. You know, we've all sinned against God and we deserve to go to hell. Can believing in the gospel, the good news, can it really save you? Is that, or is that enough? You know, I guess that's the question. Does that imply acting on what you believe in? Well, right, yeah. I, a true faith, true faith, uh, genuine belief will cause some kind of change in your actions, absolutely. So, yes. Then yes. Okay, great. Do we all agree with that? Okay. So, the gospel is capable of saving you. The good news, not only is it true, but it also somehow, God's, Paul even talks about there's power in the gospel to save. This good news, the salvation. Uh, is it possible to earn salvation? Is there something you can do to, to get it? Robert, what do you think? Uh, no. Nothing? Well, believing is an act, right? <coughs> is it? Yeah. What do you think? Mm. Oh, shoot. Like believing is isn't enough? enough? My bad. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, it's like if you save a bunch of cats in the tree from, like, dying on fire, that doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven. Just because you're doing nice things. Mm. You know, we brought, I remember uh, there was a, somebody said that, what about um, 
people in the military who jump on bombs to save their platoon, you know, save their... Is that... Is that... You count. Could that be... Could that save you, to give your life up for someone else? You know, because the Bible says no greater love than you would give your life up for someone. Is that enough for salvation? David says no. Anybody disagree with David? <clears throat> Too scared to disagree, huh? No, it's... no I'm just... Go ahead. What? Me? Yeah, sure. Oh, I don't know if you were looking at Robert. I was, I was looking at both of you at the same time. Oh, oh, no, I heard, I said, no, I didn't. He, he, he doesn't want to. What do you Unfortunately, think? Unfortunately, the Bible says exactly what you need to do. Peter says it himself. And that doesn't... Unfortunately, jumping on a bomb doesn't, for your comrade, doesn't apply yeah. to Which, you know, and that's that's true. You know, ultimately, God will have the last say. But I think, of course, biblically, there's only one way, and that's Jesus. You know, there's not not a single act you could do to ever add up to what He did, and that He paid the ultimate price with His blood. Anything we could ever do is is you know, the Bible calls it like poop. That's as good as it gets. You know, the greatest thing you could do. Um, what is the special formula for salvation? If there is a special formula, <coughs> and I did one on the board, but you know, well, hold on, don't say it yet. I want to, if you guys know, say, say, uh, Elmer, we, we are, Elmer comes to see that he needs God, and I say, I want to be saved. What do I need to do? What do you need to do? What's the special formula? A plus B equals C, or something else, A equals C. Uh, anybody? Special formula? Any mathematicians here? <coughs> I think grace was the only one, right? Well, I don't know. I'm asking you. Maybe I'm wrong. Shoot. I know there was one space that was nothing. It was like, I think grace and then nothing. Or something. Well, David, do you, what do you think? <laughs> you forgot. Well, make one up. If you were going to make up a formula right now, if he wants to get saved right now, what do we tell him? Do this, this, and that. He's going to hell. Poor guy. Nobody knows how to save him. <laughs> Anybody? Who cares about my formula? Just what do you think? <laughs> Not Josh. Anybody else? Okay. Kimberly's saying... All right. Uh, Elmer, we're going to try to help you get saved. Repent plus... And maybe there's another one. I don't know. All right. Last night, see, I'm going to give a message that mentioned that in there. Baptized. Alright, All right, anybody, does anybody want to help Elmer out? Poor guy. He's dying over here. No, you can't. Alright, Jesse says... Wasn't it great? Huh? Okay, Steve, what were you going to say? Faith and belief. Aren't those the same thing? Faith? <laughs> hey, we got to get this straight, guys. He's going, look, he's got five minutes. He's going to hell. Come on, we got to do this. Julia said grace. Wasn't that one of them? All right, what is grace? Anybody? What is grace besides Jerson? Can, what is grace? How does that work into you getting saved? Is it even in the equation? What do you think, there? Grace isn't? I don't know. I don't know. I want to know what that means for Grace. Right. What is grace? Getting what you don't deserve. Right? Getting what you don't deserve. Right? Uh, so, grace is a gift. That's what it is. Grace is God giving something to you that you do not deserve. Um, and, and to relate it biblically is that every one of us are sinners. We do not ever deserve God relationship with Him. We've turned our backs. Uh, but He gives us salvation, and He gives us eternal life, and He gives us blessings, you know, he, he, grace. You don't deserve it, okay? That's grace is undeserved favor. Um, Alright, so does grace have any play in, in salvation? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's put Grace in here. We can know that for sure. Grace. Uh, sorry, I put repent there, but I'm going to put it right here. Of course, yes. Hmm. Anything else? Grace enough? Oh, Steve said faith. Okay, or believe. Yeah, so let's put faith. All right. So it takes faith. Uh, we got this from the scriptures uh, in Romans, uh, in Ephesians. If you believe and you confess in your mouth, you know, you're saved. Faith in uh, in who? Elmer? What does he have to have faith in? In uh, in the cross? In the, the baptism? What does he have to have faith in? Jesus. That might do it. <clears throat> Alright, faith in Jesus. He believes that what Jesus did for him is will save him. And grace is what God gives him grace. All right. He believes God supplies the grace. And, you know, again, that can be a loaded word. And then what else? All right. To really be saved. Well, Jesus says in Mark that um, if he <coughs> says whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And that's, I mean, to say anything different would make yeah. us not true. Right, so. right. So, in, and also in Peter, like we read last night, uh, sorry, Acts 2.28, 238, they, when they ask, Peter preached, he said, what do we do? Repent and be baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what he says. So, um, and, and we can get into the, the debate, but baptism, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's a, that's a must. Whether, and we get to the question of, in the really technicalities, you know, thief on the cross, we always come to that because that's our example. <coughs> if, if baptism really is in the equation, then the thief on the cross isn't saved. If, if, it, if in all technicalities, wait, not yet. Baptism what is if, a must. What if the thief one Jesus day spit on him? No, it was a lost shepherd. No, I lost, a lost sheep. He and he baptized, baptized before. before mm -hmm. Right. Who the heck knows? Hey, maybe Who knows? That so that that's why baptism it is. It, you cannot refute that in the Bible. You need to get baptized. And if you refuse it, I would I would wonder if your faith is genuine, because first of all, you're saying that I don't want to do what you say, Jesus. I want to follow you, but I don't want to do what you say. It's like that don't make any sense. <laughs> Um, but not to spend too much time here, uh, faith plus grace plus nothing equals you're saved. That's it. Does the nothing stand for something? The nothing is you can't ever do anything to save yourself. God does it. You know, you, the, the Bible's very clear, baptism of course, that, or, that happens after. That happens after. Um, this, is, this is the important thing. You can't, you can't, put all your hope in this to save you. This is something you do. That's, that's, a, that's a work that you do. <coughs> what your faith is in Jesus and God's goodness, you know, God's mercy on you. And that saves you. And that prompts you to get baptized. That prompts you to become a new person, to stop sinning, you know, all of that. And, and, and you know, I'm not trying to say that repent and be baptized isn't biblical, of course. That's all in there. But we're just getting technical. We're getting technical. And what's really important. So absolutely, you could put baptize in here. And I, what I used to tell everyone is that my, my when growing up, my formula was um, faith plus baptism plus uh, no pork plus church on Saturday. All right, equals saved. That was mine. Because I thought I could do something to do it. But you can't ever earn it. You can't. You can never put faith in anything you do. All of it has to be on Jesus. And that's what salvation means, is that, you know, you take, you're taking a, a risk. You're putting all of yourself, like if Jesus is a stool, you're putting all of your, your weight on Him. And you're not holding on to a thing, you know. 
There's no rope, you're just tight. Ugh, no. No, you're totally gone. You're totally giving it all to him. So, yeah. So, that uh, took a little longer than I thought, but sorry. All right, so we're going to get into predestination. So in all of this salvation work, you believed, Elmer believed today, which you know, I don't know if he did, God knows. Um, he isn't baptized, so if you die right now, you're probably not getting in. You know? <laughs> on the way, say he, on the way to get baptized, he dies, car crash. Sorry, man. You know? I don't think so. I don't think that's how it works. Um, it's something happens inside. And, and yes, you do get baptized. And way more than that. You start attending church. You do all these things, absolutely, because you're already saved. So, come on. Um, all right, so can you be absolutely sure that you're saved? Is it possible? Is it possible to know for sure, yes, I'm saved. I'm ugly, but I'm saved. You know, for some people, not Jerson, of course. All right, this, this, <laughs> here's a verse, all right? Just to, just to prove it to you guys, do not take my word for it. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. And the last one, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know you have eternal life. So you can know. Julia could sit here today, broke, bald, cancer, whatever it could be, but she could know for certain she has eternal life besides her circumstances because she has the Son of God. She believes in Him. And she can know. And you can. And if you don't know, that's why we're doing this. So you can. Alright, so today we're going to talk about predestination. I'm going to go over this brief so we can start fighting already. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, let's see what time is it. 10.30 already. All right, so last week we went over predestination in the Old Testament. Anybody remember anyone in the Old Testament where it seemed like God already, before they were even born, God already called them? Or they didn't have anything to do with it, and God, God intervened and, and grabbed them. Moses. Uh, Moses. <coughs> Jeremiah. We read a verse where in his womb it says God knew him. Um, any others? Abraham, right? We learned that he was the father of the faith, and he was just minding his business, you know, doing, following his dad with his brother, and God came up to him and said, um, hey, I'm calling you out, I want to bless you. It's like God chose him for, and we, you know, what we learned is there's no evidence prior to that of Abraham ever doing anything godly. You know, as far as we know, he was a pagan guy. Okay? Esther, I think that, that's what I like, you know, it says that Esther... For such a time as this, you were, you know, put into this position that God had a, some plan. And one more is, um, after the fall, just just to just keep in mind that predestination is, after the fall, it pre God's plan to redeem the world is, is reasons why predestination is even in, in place, because He's got this plan that's unfolding. And we ended last week talking about whether you are a part of it. Is it only for the top dogs like Paul and Peter? Or is it every believer that is planned and purposed? Is it you? Could you have that much? Can you have purpose like Paul? Absolutely. Do not question it. Okay. Ephesians, again, you rest your hope on the scripture, not on, all on your opinion. I've given my opinion up for the Bible. I, whatever God says, I'll trust you. Ephesians 2.10, or 2.9, it says that, that before the foundation of the world, he, oh man, I forgot it now. Look it up. <laughs> Somewhere in there. <laughs> All right, so the New Testament, is predestination in the New Testament? And you can look at these verses, we won't get into them for time's sake, but the salvation of mankind was predestined. We read that last night in Samuel's, uh, in the sermon. Ephesians, Acts 2.23 is that God planned beforehand for Jesus to come forward. Peter was explaining the history from David and, and all of this and how Jesus um, 
was it was it was prophesied for him to come, and Jesus fulfilled the prophecy. And that's what Peter is saying. You can again, you can look it up. The salvation of man was predestined. This was all part of God's plan. Another one, Ephesians one four to five. Um, would somebody mind grabbing that one for go up? Uh, and then uh, let's see. Actually, let's just read all these. First Peter. Somebody grab First Peter two nine, and someone John six forty four. <coughs> oh yeah, and John fifteen sixteen. Uh, can you do you mind grabbing that one, David? Uh, this one, John fifteen sixteen. So, if uh, if somebody has Ephesians one, uh, one four and five. Hammer has it. All right, hit us. Uh, even, even as you chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him in love, He predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of His will. All right, so I don't know if everybody heard that, because again, you're going to fight me on this in a minute. Uh, <coughs> if everybody heard that, can you read it one more time? Did I God predestine can. people? Let's hear it again. Even as you chose us in Him before the foundation of the mm. world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him in, in love, He predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of His will. Alright, so God predestined us in Jesus before the foundation of the world. All right, I don't know if you're understanding the foundation of the world part. I, that just doesn't hit me as like it used to. Is that before any of this existed, he already had a plan. He already knew. And he knew you. That's crazy. I would have thought he would have made some of you guys better looking, but I'm nah, just kidding. We're all beautiful. I don't know why he gave it his mole, though. But that's another story. Um, all right. If, uh, let's read John fifteen sixteen, David, if you have it. You did not choose me, I chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, the kind of fruit that there is, and so the Father will give you whatever you ask for and ask of him in my name. Alright, so uh, reading this, predestination in the New Testimony. Is there evidence in this verse that seems God chooses people before they choose him? Sounds like it, right? He's talking to the apostles. He said uh, you didn't choose me. I, I chose you. And they're, wait a minute, I thought we, uh, no, I chose you. You know, Jesus walked up to the boat, uh, I want you to follow me. They were just fishing. You know, they didn't. So, yeah, obviously there, if we, you know, in that verse, it's pretty clear. God chooses. Uh, let's read another one. First um, Peter 2, 9. Whoever had that one. But you are a chosen race, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may declare the goodness of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. All right. So, who, who was the you Peter was talking to? But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Yeah. Who is who is the you? You? <laughs> right? Well, in, in the... Who? It was Jews? Jews. Oh, we, we're out then. Shoot. You, anybody here a Jew? None. It's a church. Yeah, it was a church. Uh, Peter was speaking to the church. Jews were included, absolutely. But he was speaking to the church. And that was a mixture of Jews and Gentiles. And there, this verse, just to give you some history, this verse is also mentioned in Deuteronomy where uh, it talks, God's talking to <coughs> the Jews, saying, you're a chosen people, you're, you know, you are. Now, Peter is saying it in the New Testament to everybody. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. It's all, you're chosen. And, uh, and that's in Peter, so that's comforting to know that. And, the, and it, if, again, if you have any comments, feel free. Anybody? Comments besides Jerson? I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Let's read one more then. John 6, 44. Whoever has it? I think Irene has it. No, she doesn't. She's got somebody she's texting. Yeah, taking notes, actually. Oh, great. Fooled me. <laughs> Anybody have it? 
John 6, 44. <laughs> Nobody, huh? No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. All right, so help me out, somebody. Is, is this a case, does it just sound like at, at face value, like God predestines, he chooses, really what it means, he chooses people. And um, you, she can, you can read it again if you want, but does it sound like that? God chooses people, yeah. predestines them. Like they don't really get a choice. It's, it sounds like. It sounds like no matter what you do, you can't come to God. God has to choose you. That's what it sounds like. Absolutely. Could you mind reading it one more time? Yeah. Um, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. No one can come to me unless the Father draws him. All right, so you can either get freaked at this or you can find some comfort to know that if there's any reason why I want to follow Jesus, maybe God is calling me. Maybe. According to this verse, it's true. That if you have any desire to, to be a Christian, to come, you might think, well, yeah, but I suck or whatever. But just understand that it, you... The, just the plain, you know, wanting to get closer is because God is calling you. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Yes, sir. Uh, I think also, to me, more importantly, is the notion that a lot of, a lot of people say, um, I will come to Jesus when I feel like it, or when I want to, you know. <coughs> um, if you don't want to now, you're never going to want to, you know? And so a lot of people hold off baptism and hold off, you know, commitment because in their mind, they think I can do this whenever I want. But the very fact that they don't means that God hasn't pulled them out yet. Yeah. Deep stuff. Yet yeah, as in, like, not like literally, or like no, it's not going to happen. No, because we we don't know. We have no idea, right? But like, there's so many people who, people presume that they can just come whenever they want to, yeah. and not realizing that they will never come unless. So it kind of changes the dynamic. People should be desperate to get into the kingdom of God. God, please call me, draw me. Yeah. Versus, okay, yeah, one day. Right. Yeah, a little different perspective on it. You know, yeah, we think it's all on us. But again, that's what we're going to get into right now. That it's actually all on God. We, again, what the verse is saying is that God draws you. He starts pulling on you. And um, Alright, let's talk about it. There's two different ways to view this. Alright, and we may think, oh, we're all good on this. No, no, no. When you get deep into it, we're going to start to split. But just just a disclaimer that this um, I don't if you I don't know if anybody ever heard of this Calvinism and Arminianism. Anybody not heard of it? Jasmine, heard of it? Well, Arminian is not like a race. Hmm. It's not the race what we're talking about, but you're right. You're right. Okay, it is a race, but no, this is different. Uh, Anybody? You've heard of it before? Did anybody do like a class on it a long time? We did. Ago? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So today, uh, I it's I'm just I'm gonna it's it's a deep one. It's hard to really just blow over it. So we're gonna start it. And again, if you guys want more, we're gonna go into it more. But there's two ways to view this predestination. We again, we may all think, yeah, it's very clear. When you get into it deep, there's some questions that arise. And that's where we start to split. There is split even now. You may not even know it just in this room. I'm not going to point them out. But um, that's what I was going to say. Christians debate on this. You can be a Christian and have either side. It doesn't make you not a Christian. It just, there's different views biblically. All right, so there's two thoughts. Calvinist, this is named after a guy named John Calvin. 
he was around during Martin Luther. They did the revolution. You know, they were both Reformation. Sorry, they were both a part of it. Yeah, and, uh, and it was about the 16, 13 something, 15, 15s. All right. So he started teaching this, and later on, after you know he died, they coined this belief on called it Calvinism. And then after he died, there was a guy who was born, and he actually went to John Calvin's training school, and he came up with a different way of viewing predestination, is that, uh, which we're going to get into. And his name was, what was his name? John. John. Arminius. Arminius. John's amazing. Uh, and uh, so these two thoughts have continued to move forward. Um, so here's a breakdown, just so you guys are aware. There's a breakdown. The Calvinist first is a system, it, it adheres to a very high view of Scripture. Everything um, is based on the Scripture. All right. If the Scripture doesn't say it, no. We, they really take the Scripture, um, a high view of it, and it's all very theological. Uh, it focuses on God's sovereignty. And if you don't know what sovereignty means, that means God's in total control. Nothing is out of his control. Everything. Salvation <coughs> is in his control. Um, and here's a breakdown of some of the points. There's actually five. I put four here just for um, uh, clear, just to be brief. Uh, that God, by his sovereign grace, predestines people into salvation. Okay, So because of his grace, before the world was created, he predestines who's going to be saved. He predestines people into salvation. All right, that's this view. Jesus died only for those who are predestined. All right, only for the people that God predestined, He died for them. You know that the the atonement doesn't cover everybody; it covers the ones He died for, which is the ones He predestined. And cast me if I'm falling off anywhere. Uh, God regenerates the individual, where He is then able to and wants to choose God. So God regenerates people. Everybody, and it gets deeper, people are dead in their sins, but God has to pull them out and give them, uh, give them the ability to believe and want to choose God. And the last one, it's impossible for those who are redeemed to lose their salvation. Okay, so for a Calvinist person in the belief, you cannot lose your salvation. You're totally secure in God. And God saved you. And then we have the Armenian. Okay? And again, if I'm missing anything, just pop in. Armenianism, on the other hand, maintains that God predestined, but not in an absolute sense. He looked, this is what it means. You remember the verse in uh, Romans 8.28 said, For whom he foreknew, he predestined. Again, we read it last night in church. Whom he foreknew, he predestined, and whom he predestined, he called, or something of that. So it says that God that God predestined not in an absolute sense. Rather, He looked into the future to see who would pick Him, and then He chose them. So, out of His foreknowledge. So God knows everything. He's got all knowledge. He looked into the future, saw, oh yes, David, He's going he's gonna to choose me. So I'm going to predestine Him. Because I already know He's going to choose. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to... Uh, interfere his free will, I'm going to choose because he chose me. Alright? And then God chooses them. And here's some of their belief, the beliefs in Armenianism side. Jesus died for all people's sins who have ever lived and ever will live, not just the Christians. Okay? Jesus died for everybody, not just the believers or those who were predestined. Uh, each person is the one who decides if he wants to be saved or not. So, like we talked about, God calls you. People can actually say, nope, not me. You know, and, and that's, that's the view here because there's free will involved. That you can say, no, I don't want, I don't want you to call me. I don't want to answer. Uh, and finally, it's, it is possible for you to lose your salvation. You could lose your salvation. As an Armenian, in the belief you can lose it because you chose it. All right, so that's a little breakdown. Any thoughts? Questions? I got a whole ton of questions. Uh, yes, sir, in the back. One minute. Holy smokes. All right, anybody else? <laughs> Any questions? 
How do you lose your salvation? Mm. How do you lose your salvation? According to like the Armenian beliefs. Yeah. So you chose it. Yeah, if you can choose it, if you can, if you, well, if you can resist God and you can choose God, then it's depending on your choice. You can, you can go so far to, to lose it because it depends on you. There is a part that depends on you. Um, and that's faith. What if you give up your faith? You're gone. And, and really what I think the Calvinist would say is you have to rephrase it. Can you lose your salvation? But the Calvinist would say, can, can Jesus lose you? And that's really what it, what it comes down to. If you belong to Him, that means Jesus loses you rather than you lose Him. So... Yeah, again, there's two different, there's two sides on it, and I'm not going to try to convince everyone. I'd love to, but I'm not going to try to convince everyone here today, because you have to, you have to take your own stance on it, and it takes some study <coughs> in scriptures. Um, but as you can see already, we're kind of running out of time to get into it. But uh, let me, I want to, I want to show you a video. It's like two or three minutes. Now we're going to go, because, uh, and again. Uh, do you, if you guys, do you guys want to touch on it next week, or are you guys already over it? <coughs> touch a little bit on it. I do. All right. Uh, I'm going to show you a video. Um, oh man, this isn't working. It's supposed to work. Oh, I like Wretched. It's cool. Wretched. <laughs> All right, if you and if you got to go, just roll out, guys. I'm sorry. We we it's not the whole thing. It's just to, I think a thoughtful, balanced response from Dr. John MacArthur at an event from give or take about a decade ago regarding Calvinism versus Arminianism. Now, you're probably one or the other. If not, this will be a bit of an introduction to you. <coughs> Might I ask? both camps, both sides, to at least consider what Dr. John MacArthur is setting forth? Uh, let me do it this way. Okay, I'm going I'm to give you a little test. Okay. Um, do you believe that God is sovereign in salvation? Of course, we went through that today. Do you believe God chooses who will be saved? Of course. Do you believe the Father draws? Yes. Do you believe that the, the Son keeps? Yes. Do you believe the Son raises? Yes. It's all sovereign. It's all predestined. It's all established. Absolutely right. This is what the Bible says. Uh, do you believe that um, whosoever will may come? Yes. That's what the Bible says. Um, do you believe that God finds no pleasure in the death and judgment of the wicked? Yes. Uh, do you believe that uh, Jesus wept because sinners wouldn't repent? Of course. Uh, do you, are you willing to call all sinners to repent? And do you believe they're responsible if they don't come? Yes. Well, how, how, how do you harmonize that? I don't know. I don't know how to harmonize that. Well, you're expecting, you're asking too much of me. I'm not God. You want my little peanut pea pusillanimous brain to grasp that? Give me a break. It's not my problem. But the, the one thing I can't do is, is deny what Scripture says. Uh, this will comfort you. Who wrote Romans? This is basic. Christianity 101 here. Who wrote Romans? Can't answer the question, can you? Why? All of Paul? All his vocabulary? All his heart? All his thoughts? All his words? All of God? And yet not mechanical? I'll ask, since you did so well on that question, I'll ask you another one. Um, who lives your Christian life? God? So you want to hold Him responsible for the condition of your Christian life? Who lives your Christian life? This is pretty, it's pretty basic, right? You're doing it right now. Every day. Who's living your Christian life? You say, I am. Really? You say, 
God is. I don't know whether you could convince everybody who knows you. You can't even answer that question. Listen to what Paul said. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I. He didn't know either. He said, this is the divine mystery. And it's all of me and all of him. And what's wrong is me and what's right is him. In every major doctrine of the Bible, in every major doctrine, you have an apparent paradox that you cannot resolve. I know that I'm kept eternally secured by God, but I also know I'm commanded to persevere in faith. Two sides of the same thing. I know I can't be saved unless I'm chosen and called, and I know I can't be saved unless I'm willing to repent and believe. I don't have to harmonize it, but nor can I deny those things. And in the end, mark it folks, in the end, God will get all the glory for every righteous thing that is done. That's because right. it is a... Yep, so that's a little intro. Um, again, we'll, we'll touch on it next week. It's, it's a deep one, so it's hard to blow over. So, uh, that's a start. Uh, Jesse has a lot of opinions on this, so next week he'll be, he'll be in it. So we'll start, we'll start earlier, we'll get on it. But let's pray today that you aren't all confused, that God helps you. Uh, so let's pray.